You would think that optics companies, more so than any other company, would understand the value and meaning of transparency, but unfortunately, that is not the case. Today I'm comparing two binoculars that I own. I have the Vortex Razor UHD 10x42 binoculars and the Maven B2 11x45 binoculars. You might be asking why am I comparing these two binoculars? The reason is because they're similar price points, they're both good optically, and they're both reasonable enough in price for most people who are serious about hunting, especially western big game hunting, to be able to afford. Beyond that, they have similar magnification, similar objective size, that's the size that points toward whatever you're looking at, and most importantly, I think, they both have the same kind of prism. In this case, it's an Abe Koenig prism. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned transparency. And what I mean by that is simply this. Whatever optics website you go to, they're gonna give you a bunch of terms for why their stuff is the best. And let me just give you some of the ones that I found. Swaro Bright, Swaro Dur, Swaro Top, Swaro Vision, XR Plus, Armor Tech, Extra Low Dispersion. I don't know how you figure out what extra low is. Ultra FL Concept, T Coding, Ergo Balance, Low to Tech, Twilight Max HD, Ultravid HD Plus, Shot HT Glass, Twilight Factor, Comfort Focus. All those things are ways that optics companies will describe their products, but how are we to understand what that even means? I don't know how to define what extra low dispersion is for one company versus another company, and I think people who've owned a lot of optics can tell you that not all optics are the same, so how am I to make a decision? With all these terms out there and no real way to understand exactly what they mean, they might as well be calling all their products the bestest, most excellentest, hyper-technological science of all time. Because to me, what's the difference? They're saying this is the greatest thing ever, but I have no objective way of comparing one to another. And how am I going to know the difference unless I buy them all and try to use them all and I simply don't have that kind of money lying around. So I have to try and figure out a way to figure out exactly what I'm getting before I get it so that I can know that my money is going to be well spent. And these things are not cheap at all. And you're going to see if you're diving into optics that you can spend as much or as little as you want to. And um, usually the more you pay, the better stuff you get. But that's not always the case. So after many hours of research on the internet, let me tell you about the objective facts for these two binoculars. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is price. The Vortex Razor UHD has an MSRP that's over $2,000, but what you're actually gonna pay for them is about $1,499, so 1,500 bucks for those. The Maven B2s, if you get the same power as I have, the 11 power, you're gonna spend $1,100 on those. Moving beyond that, the magnification on the Vortex is 10 times, so you're gonna see things as if they're 10 times closer than what they really are. With the Maven B2, it's 11 times, and that's kind of an oddball magnification. Usually it's eight or 10 or 12, but with the Maven B2s, they do seven, nine, and 11. And uh, I actually like the 11. You get just a shade closer than with the 10s, but it's not so close that you lose things in view a lot. So I like 10, I like 11. Uh, to me, that's kind of a wash between the two. The eye relief in both is 16.7 millimeters, which might make it difficult for you to get a really good and clear picture through the binoculars if you have glasses on, especially if they're kind of big glasses where you can't quite get the binoculars close enough to your face. So that's something to keep in mind, but it's the same for both of these. For our purposes, it's identical. Now the exit pupil for the Vortex is 4.2 millimeters. The exit pupil for the Mavens is 4.1 millimeters. And that's just simply referring to how big the hole of light is that comes out of the binocular toward your eye. So the bigger the hole, the more you can kind of move it around and still get a picture. If the hole's very small, then you might have difficulty locating the image in the binocular. But 4.2, 4.1, not a huge difference there. Now, field of view. That's how much stuff you can see when you're looking through the binoculars. At 1,000 yards, with the Vortex, you can see 346 feet from one side to the other. With the Mavens, you can see only 314 feet from one side to the other. So a smaller field of view, but that's because it's zoomed in more. So the angular field of view, so how big of an angle you can see at one time, with the Vortex it's 6.6 .6 degrees, with the Mavens it's six degrees, but the apparent field of view, that's the magnification times the actual angle, is how much it seems like you can see. They're actually both identical, 66 degrees. So when you look through them, you feel like you're seeing the same amount of stuff. With the Mavens, it's just zoomed in a shade more. 
Let's talk about the weight now. And if you're backcountry hunting, this matters. So you're trying to shave off ounces here and there, and hopefully it adds up enough to make it easier for you to hike up and down those hills. So the Mavens are 33.25 ounces. Not light, but not crazy heavy either. The Vortex are 32.2 ounces. So one ounce lighter. So the Mavens are slightly heavier, not a whole bunch. If that one ounce matters to you, then that might be very important. If it doesn't matter to you, because that one ounce doesn't matter to me all that much, um, I'm just looking for the best quality glass. Also, both of these are made with a magnesium frame, which keeps them from being too heavy. They're both purged with a gas that's not holding any water, so they won't fog up and they're waterproof. Also, the components for the Mavens are made in Japan and assembled in the USA. With the Vortex, I couldn't find out where they're made or where the components are from. They could be Chinese, they could be Japanese, they could be German. I don't know. I tried to find it. I tried mightily to find it, but I struck out on that one. And the last thing I want to talk about is a very, very important one. And seeing this is what made me decide to pull the trigger and get the Mavens. That's light transmission. That's essentially how much light goes through the binoculars and to your eye. For the Mavens, I found that they have light transmission of 94.8%, which is phenomenally good. It's as high as anything I've seen. For the Vortex, I searched and searched and searched on the internet and could not find what percent light transmission there was for those Vortex UHDs. Now, light transmission is extremely important because it's a measure of how much of the light from the thing you're looking at is going to be able to make it to your eye uh, when you're looking through the binoculars. Now, the higher the light transmission, the more of that light is going to make it to your eye, so you're gonna be able to see it more clearly, it'll be brighter, and you can pick things out and resolve things that you might otherwise not be able to resolve. Now, to give this some context for you guys, um, many of you probably had a telescope growing up, or maybe you have one right now. Now, if you have one of those little telescopes that are pretty cheap, you might be able to get, oh, this is gonna be double the magnification, or you can have a bajillion times magnification, and you still can't really see very well. And the reason why is because ultimately it's about light gathering. So the more light you can bring into the telescope, the more light can reach your eye, the better you can see things. So they have those big Dobsonian telescopes where they're gathering way more light and you can see much, much, much better. So magnification isn't the be all end all of being able to see things well. Light transmission is gonna be a big part of that. It's not everything, but it's a big part of it. Now, to give you some perspective on the percent light transmission, let me tell you some of the light transmission numbers that I was able to find. And most of these are from the big European manufacturers. So, the Swarovski NL Pure 10 by 42 binoculars. 91% light transmission. Those are about $3,000, so they're certainly not cheap. The Swarovski EL, they're just a shade under $3,000, also 91% light transmission. The Leica Noctavid, 91% light transmission. The Zeiss Victory SF, 92% light transmission. Nikon Monarch HG, 92% light transmission. The Leupold BX5, I read on a third-party website, I don't know if this is true or not, that it's in the low 90s. So it could be 90, 91, 92, I don't really know. I don't think they published that on the website. And then the Mavens are at 94.8, and the only thing that I found that was close uh, was the Zeiss Victory HT, that's high transmission, were 95% light transmission, and they also have the Abe Koenig Prism. So 94.8, I would round that up to 95, so I'm thinking it's you know, right in the same category. So I was only able to find one other pair of binoculars that are, by the way, way more expensive uh, that match the light transmission numbers that I saw in the Maven. So that's what impressed me about them. That's what intrigued me about them. And that's why I ended up doing this comparison. So that's a summation of the stats, kind of the objective facts, no pun intended, about these binoculars. Now, those are oftentimes difficult to find. And the one thing that actually made me pull the trigger on the Mavens, even though I already had these Vortex binoculars, was that they list everything out in a chart. So they're completely upfront about all the information and I really appreciated it. So I thought, you know what, I should get it. And even if I don't like it, at least I feel like they're being upfront and honest about it. So I'm gonna give a link to their binocular comparison chart. So they do that for all their optics. So they tell you the light transmission on all their rifle scopes and you know all their binoculars and compare them. It tells you what's made in Japan and where it's assembled and all that stuff. So. I just appreciate the honesty. Um, so I'll link that, maybe put a clip of it right here for you guys. But now we're gonna move on to things that are subjective. So my impressions of one pair of binoculars versus the other. 
And so the first thing I want to talk about is clarity. So how clearly you can see things. And subjectively, in my experience, it just seems that things get more clear with the Maven. I don't know if it's because it's zoomed in more, but it just, when you're focusing, there's a point where it seems to just perfectly lock into focus and you can see every detail of the thing you're looking at. The Vortex binoculars are great. Those were the first binoculars that I ever bought uh, because I was told, get the very best glass you can possibly afford. And that's about as much as I could afford. So I got those and I was thrilled with them. And then I was even more thrilled when I used my brother's binoculars. He had a relatively cheap pair that cost maybe 200 and something dollars. And he's like, yeah, these are pretty good. And so I pick them up and I start looking through them and I'm like, these aren't pretty good. These are garbage in comparison to these Vortex UHDs. Um, and that just made me appreciate it more. I tried some other binoculars um, several times and I was always very impressed with my purchase of the Vortex. Loved them, um, still love them. But the issue is I don't get it quite as crystal clear in the Vortex UHDs as I do in the Mavens. I don't know if it's possibly user error. I'm not an expert on these things. I'm just kind of reporting the things I found. But it's very clear, but the Mavens, it just seems, it's weird to describe. Looking through those, it's almost more lifelike than real life. So if you look at something, it, it everything pops. Uh, I don't know of another way to describe it, but you can see, so you could look at somebody from across the yard and you can see every hair and it, you can see it moving. It's just really remarkable and a really cool experience the first time you look through glass like that. And I thought it was awesome. Now, the Vortex are pretty close. Um, you still get a probably more than lifelike view, but not as much as with the Mavens. And then in terms of the color, again, the Mavens just seem to pop colors. So that could be something that you like or dislike, but it just seems like every color is very distinct, even more so than what you'd see just looking through your eyes. Uh, it's a really neat thing, and I would imagine it would be very helpful in identifying game on hillsides. So that's kind of where I am with that. Now, for the issue of chromatic aberration, that is where on the edges of things you can see kind of colors that shouldn't be there start to pop up. Um, and that has to do with the lenses, with the type of glass that you use, um, stuff that's beyond my pay grade. I just know that when I look through it, it's either better or worse. Now, both of them had very low chromatic aberration. So I compared these to a pair of relatively inexpensive Leupold and a pair of relatively inexpensive Vortex binoculars, the Diamondback HDs, and those two sets of cheaper binoculars definitely had more chromatic aberration, quite a bit more. So for the Vortex, I have to look for it and look at things where I think it'll show up on purpose to find it. The Mavens, I have to look even harder. So it's not that it doesn't exist, it's just so small that if I didn't know to look for it, I probably would never notice it. Next, I wanna talk about how they feel in the hand. So first, let's start with the Vortex. So the Vortex, to me, feel great. They feel solid. Moving them in and out like this, it's, you feel the mechanical resistance. It, it just feels good to operate it. So if you've ever shot a lever action rifle, you know, there's just a good feeling, you know, just the, the mechanical workings of the rifle. You pull the lever down, you pull it back up, and it just feels good. This gives me that same kind of sense. So I really like it. The armor on these is a little bit harder, I think, than the Mavens. So I'm just talking about the rubberized part. It doesn't feel quite as soft and not quite as grippy, but the barrels are narrower. So it might be easier to hold if you have smaller hands. And it's got these little grooves for your thumbs. Now that's not a huge difference, but it's a small feature that I appreciate. I can't think of anything negative really to say about them. They could maybe be a little bit lighter, but I think that's just a function of having the Abe Koenig prism, and that always makes binoculars heavier. So these are great to hold. They feel great, and I wouldn't you know, have any complaints about it at all. Now for the Mavens. A little bit softer rubberized coating on the outside. It still has that same solidly built feel that you have with the Vortex. The barrels are bigger, and it does weigh an ounce more. I can't tell the difference in weight when I'm holding them, but they feel great to hold too. And you know when you hold a quality pair of binoculars up to your eyes versus a cheap pair. 
So the cheap pair might be clanking around, not feel super sturdy. You don't have that problem at all with either of these. But if I had to give an edge to just how it feels when I'm holding it, I would give it to the Vortex. All right, now let's talk about the focus wheel. So this is something before I started spending a lot of time behind binoculars that I wouldn't have ever thought about, but it really makes a difference. So with the really well-built binoculars, the focus wheel feels solid, but has an equal amount of resistance as you rotate through the focus here. So with the Vortex, I really like it. It's buttery smooth. It's a consistent level of resistance and it just feels nice to operate. Now with the Mavens on the other hand, we have a similar but different focus knob. So again, buttery smooth, consistent level of resistance all the way through. It's not too hard, not too easy, but the thing I love about it is that it has this kind of checkered metal focus knob. So it just feels like you're never gonna lose that grip. If your hands are sweaty, they can slip on the focus wheel of the Vortex, but here it just grabs and you're never afraid that anything's gonna slip. So it just feels really nice. I love the focus wheel. It might seem like a small thing, but to me, it's just one added element that makes me love these things and just how they operate. So next, let's talk about the eye cups. And with the Vortex eye cups, there are three positions. All the way down, halfway up, all the way up. I always do all the way up because then I can rest the binoculars kind of against my brow ridge up here and it seems to hold them more steady and I just get a better picture with less shake that way. And um, I don't really have any complaints about this other than I wish it were more mechanical and stopped more firmly in each location. Uh, but then again, I rotate them all the way out. So it doesn't really affect me. It would just make me feel better if there was a very positive stop at each location. For the Mavens, I do get some of that. So if you just listen to me, put them up and down. And you get a definite stop in each location. And you get one more place on the way out. So you have all the way down, one click up, two clicks up, three clicks up. And so you have more choice in exactly where you want it to be. Again, I put them all the way out. So it doesn't really matter in terms of performance. It just makes me feel good to do it this way. One thing that does matter though, is with these, you can twist out the eye cups. So you can twist them out, clean them, make sure any dirt and debris is cleaned out of them, then screw them back in and you're good to go again. Next, the lens covers. So for the Vortex, the lens cover for the eyepieces here, nice and solid on there. Um, they're still fairly easy to take off, no issues. With these, I like them because they snap on, on the inside and they're very sturdy. I don't ever have any fear that they're gonna come off. So they never fall off the barrel like that and they never actually detach from the barrel. So this little ring, you could take that off if you wanted to, but I've spent probably a couple hundred hours messing with these things, hiking around, pulling them out, putting them in the case, all that stuff, and they've never come off without me intending to take them off. Now the Mavens, these eyepiece covers often come off, okay? So it's not the end of the world. I'm not gonna use them when I have them in my binocular harness anyway, but it would be nice if they stuck on a little bit better. Then we have the objective covers down here. Now they work totally fine. It's just my preference would be for them to lock on the inside like the Vortex. So they stay on pretty well. Sometimes they come off, they come off every once in a while, like they'll pop off, it's not, the end of the world by any means, but it still happens. I've never actually had these rubber rings come off of the barrel on accident, but one time it was pretty close. It looked probably something like that, just because I pulled them really fast out of the binocular case and this thing popped off and this little ring looked like it was about to come off as well. So again, not a huge deal, not the end of the world, but something I would like to see changed. Now let's move on to accessories. And this one is not very close to be honest with you. So the Vortex UHDs come with this harness. I've used this and hiked, uh, I don't know, a couple hundred miles uh, with these things and it is comfortable. It's lightweight. So the strap at the back is lightweight. It's not gonna be something that's too heavy or weigh you down. Um, the only thing that's moderately heavy would be the binoculars themselves, but it's a nice case, I like it. So the, the top is, is held in with these elastic bands. So when you wanna look at something, you just push that over, you pull out your binoculars, you take a look, you drop them back in, 
put this on, keep going. I like that. Also, you have this pocket that you can use for a range finder, which is what I usually did. Um, you can also use it to hold extra rounds of ammo. It's got a little sleeve in there where you can put in whatever kind of uh, cartridges you, you want, as long as they're not too, too big, I would guess. But this is a great accessory. I have definitely gotten use out of it. Um, used it a whole bunch, and uh, it's a really nice feature that I, I like from the Vortex. It's just, it's nice to have something where you order it, and then boom, you don't need anything else. You're just out using it, hiking around. It was great. Now, things that I didn't love about this. Number one is this accessories case here was actually difficult for me. Maybe I'm just a knucklehead. It was difficult for me to, to slide it in here. I actually had my wife help me do it um, because I got frustrated. It's like, why is this not working? And then she did it in about 45 seconds. So maybe it was just me. The other thing was, I never really felt like I could get this binocular harness balanced properly. It seemed like it always wanted to fall forward and would bounce around like this. And so I tried tightening the straps and that didn't really seem to help because then it would start feeling loose in another area. It just didn't really work perfectly, but sometimes perfect can be the enemy of the good. And this is very good and I really enjoyed it. Now the Mavens came with this neoprene strap. So you just put it around your neck this snaps into the receivers on the binoculars and you just walk around. Now, if you're just, uh, if you're bird watching or something, I bet that that's great. But if you're hiking and you're going up and down rough terrain, you probably don't want them bouncing around, especially if you're trying to make it through some brush and stuff. You don't want it to get caught on, you know, the vegetation that's around you. It could make it more difficult. So there's nothing wrong with this and it's actually pretty comfortable unless you're doing the things that I talked about just a second ago. Um, it's just not the same though as a binocular harness. I much prefer a binocular harness. And I think most people out there who do a lot of hiking, like big game Western hunts, are wearing binocular harnesses for a reason. So that's one item where the Vortex is the clear winner. Now we gotta talk about the business models that these companies use. Now, Maven is direct to consumer only. So you have to go to their website and order directly from Maven. Or I think you can go on Amazon, but it's coming directly from Maven. So the benefit of that is that you're not paying any kind of markup, right? So it's not like you go to Cabela's and Cabela's gets some of the money or you're, you're having to pay for a bunch of marketing and you know distribution rights or anything like that. It's you pay for the equipment itself. So that's something that's really nice. So you're not having to pay you know, 20, 30% more because other people have to get their palms greased in the process. Now I understand that in many ways, that's just kind of how business works. I totally get it. So I'm thinking about this as a consumer. Would I want to pay more or would I want to pay less? The answer is I want to pay less if I can get the same quality of stuff. And so with these Mavens, they're about $400 less. So that's one reason why I was intrigued by these because it seemed on the surface at least that they were great and they were cheaper. So I thought, what's going on here? Then after doing some research, I realized that they can make it cheaper because they're selling directly to the consumer and you're not paying other people along the way. Now with Vortex, they have a different business model. So they have distributors, they have stores. And the nice thing about having them in stores is you can walk in and go pick up a bunch of different pairs and look through them and decide the one you like. And that's just a satisfying feeling, going in, making a decision and figuring out the one that feels good, the one that looks good, all that. It's very enjoyable, at least for me, to go and kind of nerd out on something and decide that's the one I really want. So that's one benefit that you get with Vortex, but you do pay a price literally for that privilege. Now the Mavens have a demo program where you basically will pay the cost of the binoculars. They send them to you. You can try them out. If you don't like them, you send them back and you get a full refund. You only pay for shipping. So that way you can actually try them. You're not going to be saddled with a thousand dollar pair of binoculars you don't like. So. Still not the same as going to the store, but a great way to try out optics and not assume a bunch of risk. All right, at this point, I'm gonna do my best to give you guys a visual of what it looks like to use these binoculars. So I have a phone scope adapter and I used it for both sets of binoculars and I'm gonna include some of that footage. We'll put it right here.
And then I also did a resolution test. With the resolution test, there was a definite difference between the two, and I don't know exactly how much it's gonna show up on video, but one thing I will say is that the optical quality that you see on the phone scope image is not the same as what you see in the binoculars. So if you look at the phone scope, you would think, oh, this is okay. But the quality of what you see in both sets of binoculars is a lot better and a lot sharper when you actually physically look through the binoculars. But to hopefully give you a sense of what it's like, we're gonna include this footage, but keep in mind that it's ultimately gonna be limited by the optics of the phone camera itself. Now for the final part of this test, I am gonna use a resolution chart. And what this is, is essentially a tool to figure out how fine the details are that you can resolve with each optic. And so I believe this is a 1951 US Air Force resolution chart. And if you're not familiar with these, basically you have horizontal and vertical bars and they get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And then when you get to the smallest one that you can resolve, that's the resolving power of the optic. So I'm gonna do it with both the Vortex and the Maven, and hopefully that's as close to objective as possible as I can be in the quality of what you get in terms of the picture clarity with these optics. And quite frankly, in my opinion, the resolving power of both of these optics is tremendous. Simply fantastic. I know people, I've talked to people, I've seen optics, and these are gonna be fantastic, okay? So to wrap up what we were able to see outside, I was able to resolve group negative one and element number six with the Mavens and group negative one and element number two with the Vortex. So that means there were four more groups that I could get with the Mavens than I could get with the Vortex. Okay, I just finished up some low light testing and I expected both of these to be very good because they both have the Abe Koenig prism and you know they should have great light transmittance. Let me give you the results here. Unfortunately, I wish I could show you the results, but the phone scope just wasn't sensitive enough to pick up the, the view through the binoculars. Even though if you use your eyes, you can see it quite well. And uh, I'm just gonna have to summarize what happened. So I lost sight of the thing I was focusing on at 8.03 with the Vortex binoculars. And then 8.17, I lost sight of them with the Mavens. So the Mavens lasted 14 minutes longer in exceptionally low light. And I was incredibly impressed with this low light test. I'd never done the low light test on these before, um, but just simply astounding how long you could see even after it went dark with these low light binoculars. And so the Mavens, 14 minutes longer. I think that's a pretty significant difference between the two, especially when you're doing early morning or late evening scouting and you're trying to see as many animals as possible. I think there's a clear winner in this test, and that's the Mavens. Now I've got to sum things up. So I've tried to be as fair as possible throughout the entire review, and i got to be honest, I like both sets of binoculars a lot. Now, some people might try to get the cheapest binoculars, and spend very little, and some people might wanna get the most expensive binoculars out there, but for most people, the answer is gonna lie somewhere in the middle. And it's not unlikely that the answer is gonna be in that $1,000 to $1,500 range. And if you're in that range, then these are two of the top contenders for you to choose from. Now, a lot of people will do reviews, and at the end, they'll say, oh, well, this one is good, and then this one is also good, so make your own choice, whatever you want. Now I'm going to give you a clear answer. When I go to Colorado, I'm going to be taking the Mavens 100%, no questions asked. I far prefer them. Sure, the Vortex have cooler accessories and stuff, but I would prefer the company spends that money on better glass. And that way I can choose the bino harness that's exactly what I want, not just the one that they send along with it. Also, I prefer they take their money and spend it on the best glass possible instead of paying people to market for them or paying, you know, distributors or cutting in the stores that sell them. To me, it just seems like a better value. So I think that what I actually see through the Mavens is definitely better and it's $400 cheaper. So to me, there's not really any reason to have to think about the choice unless you just love Vortex and will always buy Vortex, which I understand, that's totally fine. 
but Maven just seems to me to make a lot more sense. And then finally, if anything ever goes wrong with either pair, both of these companies have phenomenal warranties. Vortex is renowned for its crazy awesome warranty. Maven, if it says Maven, they'll take care of it. And so you're not gonna go wrong with either of these. Neither one would be a mistake, but I think there's a clear choice, and I think it's the Maven B2s. As you can tell, I spent a lot of time researching and spending some time behind these binoculars to give you as fair a review as I can. And uh, I appreciate you sticking with me through this video. I know it's a lot of stuff to go through, but thank you. If you enjoyed it, if it was helpful to you, hit the subscribe button down below and hit the notification bell as well so you get notified every time I make new videos. If you enjoy the hunting content or if there's something specific you want to see, let me know down in the comments below. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'll see you guys next time.